Hello, hand letterers, and welcome back to another month of Letter With Me. Um, as usual, we are going to start by grabbing our downloads, and those will be in your Files app on the iPad, and you'll find them under your, your download section. Um, you can uh, see there are a couple files here. So one is the brushes. So if you've taken previous Letter With Me sessions, you probably already have these downloaded and don't need to do that again. Uh, we have the color palettes for this month. So those are called February AF. So to get those in Procreate, we're just going to tap it and it's automatically going to import and um, into Procreate. And then we could swipe back to our um, worksheets here. And um, there is the PDF that you can print and the Procreate. So um, we're going to tap on there and that is going to automatically open up in Procreate for us. Let's go back out of our gallery and this is the new canvas so um, in the layers uh, I have the blank layers that you can practice on if you need more than these five you could just tap the plus sign to create your own um, and these are the layers of whoops the di five different styles that we'll go through for your um, color palette if you tap on the dot, you can scroll, and that will be all the way on the bottom here. And you just tap one of the colors, and that will give that a little blue check mark to let you know that that is the uh, default. And then we can tap on the cards to just view them. Whoops, now it's making me go all the way back down again. Tap on the cards to view them larger. And this is taking longer because they're larger. Okay, um, and the brushes are should go all the way to the top if you scroll all the way to the top they should be up there but mine were already downloaded um, and are right here the lettering practice brushes so we are going to start with the basic mono brush and that matches the basic mono line which is this right here um, right now we're currently on this layer and it's indicated by it being blue so we're going to change that to the practice layer and make sure we're there. So now we can go ahead and get started. Um, and our February words are February, hearts, date night, self-love, and romance. So um, those are things I kind of think about when I think of February. And before I start lettering, let me just add my screen protector here so it feels more like paper. And uh, the brush size is a size eight. You can do this in any color. I usually do um, the, the color black so um, you can see it easier on your screen. So I will do that, but feel free to use any color you like. And for the F, um, I kind of have a little straight line going across and then a J shape and then uh, a crossbar through the J and then just a little line down. So that's how we do that F. Always two finger tap if you wanna undo something. And remember to pick up your pen after every stroke. getting into the habit of that is really good especially when um, you want to have more consistency in your hand lettering because you have more control and you're just focusing on drawing the shapes instead of drawing or writing letters And this one, um, I called it basic monoline because really that's what it is. 
It's a really super basic style um, that, I mean, you could use this style as is. Um, it's pretty legible and easy to read um, as far as script fonts go, but you can also feel free to, um, you know, add some embellishments to it and make it more your style if you like. So like right now the G comes around like this. You could have maybe the G do something like this instead and add some loops in there. Or here with uh, the H, you can add the loop on the H if you want or keep it as is. And it's almost like right on cue. As soon as I start doing video recording, my rats decide that they're thirsty and they need a drink. So that one I just did all in one stroke, but you can definitely break that up by stopping there and then picking up. And then picking up. Again, this is really basic, so you could always add in the loops. If you want it to look a little bit more, I don't know, frilly, swirly, I guess, like that. And our last word is romance. You can also um, add in a little bit of bounce to these if you're familiar with bounce lettering and that is where the letters might go above the um, guideline for the tops of the letters and below the guideline for the bottoms of the letters. So for example this R you might bring it further down. The O you might bring it further up. The M has a couple places you can bounce right there and then here. And then the A. So these are really, and I say this each time, these are just guides um, to kind of help guide you in your lettering journey. There are no, there are no, um, in no way, you know, hard and fast rules that you have to follow. Okay, so there we are done with those. Our next style, let's turn off this layer by tapping that checkbox and tapping that checkbox. And the next layer that is showing up is the flourished model line. So again, it's the same style, but we're adding some slant to it so the letters aren't up and down anymore. Uh, make sure you're on a new blank layer. And we're adding some flourishes. And let's change our brush to the Mono Flourish AF. This brush is a little bit thinner. Uh, we are at a size 10 here. And I always tilt my canvas um, because I like when my lines are um, parallel with me. So like right now, they're, they're not. They're off to the side a little bit. And the way I'm sitting, um, the, they can draw towards me easier. So for the F, I'm going to start here at the top and do a little curve and then a curve. Let me start over. So we're going to start here with a slight curve, okay? And then we're going to draw straight down and then start to curve away and loop through, we loop through again, and then pick up and then make our little um, end of the F there. So let's do that all in one stroke like that. And the top of the F. You can see we went outside of the uh, cap height line and that is okay because we don't have anything um, above it really. So like if we were doing this in a quote uh, where there were words on top, I might want to adjust that a little bit. Uh, when I'm doing flourishes, 
when I'm creating these words. I don't start with the flourish. I start with the regular letter and then I go back in and add flourishes where I think they would look appropriate. So when you're practicing, uh, you can do that or you can just follow the um, whole letter. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So this is a one long flourish. So let's do that wide descender and then it comes up and flourishes like that. So what I meant before is uh, you could just start here with the end of the flourish. Like that. Or um, I'm going to start here with the entrance stroke and I just draw the basic shapes of the letters. So we have our entry stroke, our ascending stem loop, and our compound curve. So those are those three shapes that make up the H. And then I go back and add in a flourish. So if you're brand new to flourishing, you might just want to start um, you know, tracing from the flourishes. But if you have um, a good foundation of lettering experience and you want to add your own flourishes or you're comfortable knowing where to put the flourishes, then you um, might want to start there. And being that it's February and I started this Letter With Me series last May, that means we only have two more months. And so we have a full year of these. And once we have the full year completed, I will bundle them all into um, one download and maybe like a playlist on YouTube of all the videos that go with it. Um, so everything's in one spot for every, everybody. And um, so we only have, after this month, we have March and April to do yet. And then the series will be finished. So um, if you have any feedback for me, if you've been watching this series, I would love to hear it. Um, and let me know if you want more of these type of letter with me sessions. Um, let me know what you might want to see different. Do I go too slow? Do I go too fast? You want the camera at a different angle? Is my hand in the way? <laughs> you know, like stuff like that. Like, let me know what I am doing that could be improved. Or if you have any suggestions as far as um, what sort of sheets you want. Like right now, it's just five words in five different styles. And the words are based off of, you know, the theme for the month. But they don't have to be, continue to be that. It could be, you know, a specific style. Like, do you like one of these styles? better than the other that you want a bunch of practice sheets for. Okay, let's pause what I was saying. And now that we're finished with that, let's go to our layers. Turn that layer off, turn that layer off. Well, we're now on Brushy Bounce. We're gonna go to a new blank layer and change our brush to Brushy Bounce, Meta Size 8. Again, we're gonna zoom in. We're back to the up and down and not slanted again. So I start with the top of the F and then add pressure coming down, 
release that pressure going back up and pick up my pencil. And then I just add a little pressure here, like that. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Light, heavy pressure down, and pick up. Light pressure up, heavy pressure down, light pressure up. And here I come down a little bit with heavy pressure and pick up. Then light pressure down, sorry, heavy pressure down, light up, heavy, light, heavy, light, light up, heavy down, light up. So that is kind of the formula we follow. Anytime your pen's coming down the screen or towards your body, it's heavy pressure. And anytime it's moving away from you or going towards the top of the screen, it's light pressure. So what I was saying before is, um, you know, let me know if you want, you know, is there a style in here that was, you absolutely hated and thought was a waste of time? Um, you know, eliminate that one completely or is there, um, you know, do you like the, the extras that I do at the end of the video, but don't want to sit through the lettering portion of it. Um, or it could be maybe, let me think, I forgot what I was going to say. It'll come back to me in a second, <laughs> hopefully. Oh, I don't know what I was going to say. Um, it could be maybe that you don't want me talking at all. Maybe you just want the video to see how I draw the letters and don't need the feedback of, you know, what I'm saying or the extra tips. So, yeah. Let me know what you think. And what um is working what isn't working what could be gotten rid of and then i can start my plan for uh, the next lettering the things that i create for you all this one was created because um in my patreon i actually started my patreon for people who already kind of knew the basics of lettering and just wanted some fun tutorials on maybe how to add a little bit of style to their lettering using Procreate. And I had a ton of people join um, who really needed more help with the actual learning how to letter with the basics. Um, and they still wanted to do the, the tutorials to follow along with, but really just wanted to learn how to letter. So I still kept doing the regular tutorials, but added in this extra piece for uh, the beginners who really need that one-on-one um, -on -one help with seeing how to draw the letters and the practice sheets. So that is how that was born. Okay, turn off that layer, turn off that layer. Let's go to Flourished Classic, tap on the blank layer and choose our Flourished Classic AF. This one is slanted, so I'm gonna zoom in here. Okay, and that's a good size. That is a size eight also. And with this style, we are now adding in, this one is a little bit more of an advanced style for lettering. It's actually quite advanced because we have um, not only our flourishes, but we also have the pressure added, um, like the bouncy letter. So we're going to start here at the top and draw this line down and add pressure as we come down and then let go of pressure as you start to go back up. And my hand went, <laughs> I was going too slow for that. And my hand was like shaky. So I'm going to do that again. Try to do it all in one stroke. 
Uh, the other issue I'm having is that my hands were really dry before, so I put lotion on them. And <laughs> do heavy pressure down there and then pick up. Um, they're not easily sliding across my screen now because I had lotion on. Let me go back and do that first. Also, I've explained in the past in other of um, my ladder with me sessions that, um, oops, let me try to read you. We gotta love that two finger tap. It just comes in handy so much. That um, moving your hand around the screen is um, better when you're doing calligraphy versus, you see how my hand's moving? Um, it really comes in handy when you're doing your flourishes. So instead of you know keeping your hand in place and drawing with the pencil like loosely, like a, you know, like a, an artist might loosely sketch something, um, you don't wanna be that loose, you want uh, you want your hand to be loose, not your fingers, if that makes sense. The other thing that is a little bit different about this style, and this, again, I've mentioned previously, so um, you kind of understand the thinking behind it, is you might notice in the flourishes, when we're talking about these um, brush lettering, we say heavy strokes down and light strokes up, but you notice the flourishes are all light strokes. And that is just my preference. You don't have to keep it that way. So for example, I keep all my flourishes on a light stroke. You could Go light, and as you're coming down, add pressure, and then light pressure, if you like the look of that. But I tend to keep all of my um, pressure and my thicker lines on the actual letters themselves, and the flourishes, because I think it makes the letters stand out, and the flourishes are just like a, you know, an extra thing. I don't want the flourishes to be the main event. I want my letters to be the main event. So that's where I put the, um, my rats are being so loud. So that's where I put the um, focus, I guess. didn't quite meet up. So what I did was I did my line like that and you want to make sure that those two lines are meeting up but still following this um, line. So you can see here I can't quite finish this flourish because it's off of the screen. So I'm going to stop right there where it connects and then move it over and finish off that flourish. And nobody will ever know that that wasn't done in one stroke. Unless they're watching you see your lettering. And the S, I'm going to curl up with a little dot there. And 
the F is all one stroke. So we have our ascending stem loop, which goes down into a descending stem loop, and then the exit flourish. I start right here at the top with light pressure, and then go into heavy pressure, and then back up with light pressure. And then I just continue that line with all light pressure. Where am I going here? <laughs> Let me try that again. I lost my direction for a second. The V is also all one stroke. So we have our O exit, which goes into a um, compound curve, which goes into an exit stroke for the V. So that's a, a fun one to practice because it's a lot of loops and switching of pressures. And finally, romance. And at the end of this tutorial, we will play around with the feature called Liquify. If you're new to Procreate, um, that might be something that interests you, or if you're already familiar with Procreate, and are just here for the lettering practice, this might show you how you can create just a different style of lettering with, not a style, but like, um, you know, colors and clipping masks and backgrounds and that kind of stuff. So um, again, my C, I forgot to say, I ended with a little dot there. And okay. Now let's go and turn that layer off. Let's go to a blank layer and turn off the flourished classic layer, which now just leaves us with the quirky. And that's our last page. This is uh, the quirky AF brush. And this is a style that um, is very much its name. So I call it quirky because it doesn't really follow a whole lot of rules when it comes to lettering. It, it breaks a couple of the rules. Um, one being that all of the letters, whether they're uppercase or lowercase, are all on the same lines. Like they're all the same height, I should say. This brush is also not pressure sensitive. It might look like it is in areas because when you're drawing down, there's thick lines, but when you draw across, the line's a little bit thinner. So this line here is thinner than the lines coming down. So it gives the impression that it might be a pressure sensitive brush, but it's not. It's just the way I set the, the brush up in the shape section. And also the um, the downstrokes and the stems in the letters don't adhere to the guidelines exactly. So normally, like a straight down letter would look like that. Straight down would look like that. And you can see that is parallel to the, um, oh my gosh, they're making so much noise behind me. Um, it's parallel to the guideline, but this one just kind of curves a little bit in certain areas, so it's not parallel, but it's still, the letters are still, you know, up and down, not slanted. So the T has a little bit of curve to it.
really apologize for all the noise <clears throat> my girls are making behind me. Um, usually, uh, this is my office that I'm in, and I share my office with them because I don't want them in my bedroom because they're nocturnal animals. So, like, literally, they're up all night making noise. Um, so I have them in here in my office, and they know when I come in here, I usually let them out of their cage um, to play. And I think they're just having their little tantrums right now because they think they should be out. So also, I mean, that could be part of your feedback. If that noise in the background bothers you, you can say, you know, I don't like that noise. Do it in a different room. Do your tutorials in a different room. And, you know, and then in that case, I will definitely take that under advisement. However, this is still the quietest room in the house where I could actually sit and do this. So if that were the case, I would probably just add a music instead of me talking. Okay, so that is our, um, all of our lettering. So let's turn off the last one. And now I can show you how to make um, how to use a liquify option. And I'm just going on here to see which of these might be good for liquify. It doesn't really matter. Let's go with uh, these here, which were, are the Flourish Monoline. And I'm going to select the, the layer by tapping the arrow. And then I'm gonna move that box to the middle. Actually, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So it's easier to see. And that is about in the middle. Okay, now, one thing you could do is, let me slide this to the top. So I'm just gonna tap and hold it and slide it up top. And I am going to add a new layer and this is where I'm going to pull in my colors. So um, I'm still on the quirky, but let me actually go to the basic mono and I'm gonna turn that size up. And in my color palettes, I'm just going to pick one of each of these colors. Um, I'm not gonna use the white, gray, or black. Those are usually just my neutrals, my neutral colors that I use, um, this is the actual palette itself, these five colors. So I'm going to start first with the hot pink. And you can um, fill this any way you like. Uh, you can do vertical stripes or um, horizontal stripes or diagonal stripes. You don't have to do stripes at all. You can do, you know, blobs of color, however you want. But the... Um, the goal is to just fill the paper with these colors next to each other. And an easy trick, instead of drawing, continuing to draw these, we could just uh, duplicate this and let's move this one over so I'm going to tap the arrow and move this so it's filling that whole side actually let's go this way filling that there okay and now I'm going to duplicate this layer so swipe, swipe the layer to the left and tap duplicate and then move this one over until it's lined up there these don't have to be perfectly whatever because we're going to be moving them around. And let's duplicate that again and move that one over. Okay. Okay, after we have all of the paper filled up, we want to combine these three layers. And an easy way to do that is to just put one finger on the top layer, one finger on the bottom layer. <laughs> Whoops. I went too slow and selected it. Uh, one finger on the top, one finger on the bottom, and pinch them together like that. Now it's all on one layer. And I am going to make it 
a duplicate of this right away as turn off one of them and we're just going to be working on this top one here and now we're going to go to our magic wand and tap liquify and uh, let's zoom out a little bit so we can see our whole canvas here is our liquify menu the first couple push twirl right twirl left pinch expand crystals and edge are all of the different ways you could liquify your work then the reconstruct adjust and reset are ones that you could use to undo any liquify spaces and then down here just controls the sort of the amounts that we're using and the sizes so right now we're on push okay um let's say we turn our size up let's just say like 60. pressure i have all the way up this just um is how much pressure you need to put on the paper um paper <laughs> on the screen for it to work and then the distortion uh, distorts what you're doing, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then the momentum controls how much like oomph is behind the stroke. So uh, let's just play with this as is. So we have size is 60, pressure is all the way up, distortion is none, and momentum is none. Now, if I take my pencil and um, do like a little flick, you can see it pushed these colors a little bit this way and it stopped um, probably right here around the pink but now if i turn the momentum up and do that same gesture you see how much further um, up that went that push went and that is because that had it has um, the momentum increased so it's giving it more momentum behind the stroke and that's one way that you can liquefy and play with it uh, if you don't like it, this is where we can just tap reset and it goes back to the original. Now the distortion, um, you can see how there's like some distorted lines here. They're not all smooth. So that's kind of what distortion does. And you notice distortion a little bit more on these others um, than on the push, but it makes it not so clean, okay? Again, let's go to reset and let's do twirl right. So my size, again, I'll keep at 60. I'll keep the pressure at max. Um, let's turn the distortion down and the momentum down. And I'm just going to tap my pencil anywhere on the canvas and hold it in place. And you can see it's going to take what's immediately around my pencil and twirl it into, um, well, it's going to keep going until all of the colors are mixed, but you can pick up before that. Pick up your pencil when it gets to like a twirl combination that you like. But if we add some, um, let's reset that. If we add some distortion to that, or actually add all the distortion, um, it twirls, but not all in one circle. It distorts it and adds multiple twirls and with this you can um, you know pick up your pencil like this or you can move it across the screen how you like and the great thing about liquify is it's really relaxing because there's kind of no wrong or right way to do it it's just really just playing around and having fun with it Twirl left is the same as twirl right except obviously it's in the other direction um, this this time I'm going to put the size all the way up and let's put, well, we don't need the momentum because we're just gonna hold our pencil in place and it's gonna do it to the whole canvas because our size is all the way up. But you can still move, move that around if you like. And if you get to have a design, say like this, and let's zoom in. Let's say um, you want this pink area you want it to have more of these colors around it you don't want so much pink in there this is where the pinch comes in handy so again let's go to our size let's say about a 45 um, pressure is all the way up we don't want to distort it and we don't need the momentum but it's going to when i put my pencil it's going to pinch everything towards my pencil so that is how you can get rid of those large areas. So I just got 
rid of kind of that that big pink area there um, let's do it let's say I don't want this big yellow area right here so I'm gonna pinch that together okay so I got rid of that big yellow space now the opposite of that is expand so let's tap on expand and let's find an area we want to make bigger let's say I want to make this purple spot bigger I'm going to put my pencil there and you can just hold it and see see what it does um, also the two finger tap to undo works and the three finger tap to redo also works um, but let's turn our size down and this time let's move it along the screen so this is one way if you if you draw a line and you want your line thicker this is one way you can accomplish that um, the distortion on the other hand let's turn up the distortion and see what that looks like so Let's do it on this pink area here. You see how it's distorted? It's not all one round line. So it's more organic looking. And the same thing with um, the pinch. If we turn the distortion all the way up and pinch it towards, that's distorted as well. Okay. Um, and let's say um let's say you worked on this whole canvas and you only want to change that little part right there so if i would hit reset it would reset everything and i don't want to reset everything i just want to um adjust and you can put on the um amount of you know where you made changes at um by how much it's changed if I'm saying that right so right now it's none so it's back to the original and if you just want to add a little bit of the changes you made or half of the changes you made or all the way up to all of the changes but going back to what I was saying if you want to just fix one area and not the whole you can go to reconstruct and again you can choose your size and pressure and if you just go to that area that you're at it's going to um, you know the more you play with it it's going to eventually reconstruct it to back to the final lines that it was on okay um, and then finally we have edge which um, creates an edge obviously <laughs> on the um, design so if you want it to look like there's like a line or a crease or an edge to something, it's the same um, as we've been doing. So like, let's make, let's go to 45%. And if you just, like I like to draw an actual edge or a line, I should say, not an edge. I just draw a line and it makes it look like that's an edge of the piece I might be more able to see it here I go over it a couple times kind of like coloring over it and that makes that an edge let's do it here so you can see what that looks like And that made a little bit of an edge so um, let me go to reset and let's go back one to crystals this is also a fun one um, so let me let's say 60 pressure up distortion is down and I'm, again I'm just gonna put my pen down um, my pet my brush is so small so I have to zoom in so you can see it it's creating like these little um, jagged wisps that are coming off sort of like a tie-dye effect let's make that bigger so you can see better so if I just hold my brush there it's going to do it in the size of my brush um, but you could also move your brush around 
You can also add momentum. And then you can just do like little strokes. Or let's reset that and let's add distortion. And now see, we have our size all the way up. And now see how that distorts our canvas. So that's really fun. Um, another thing that you can do is combine several of these. So one um, that I like to do, I might start with the twirls and I have all of my sliders all the way up and I'll just tap in a couple places just to get those twirled. And then let's say I want to add some crystals. So I'll add some crystals to those. And um, if there's like big blobs of color that I don't like, um, I grab the push and let me turn the distortion down. And I might just push push that off the canvas, push things closer together. So uh, this is definitely a lot of fun to be had with this feature. Um, let me go back and, okay, so for this one that I'm making, I'm going to do the twirl right. I'm gonna have the distortion all the way down and the size all the way up and I'm just going to twirl some of these here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna push so we have some Kind of just trying to make it so there's you know yellow throughout and you know some of each of the color throughout that there's not you know one color like right now there's a lot of this yellow right here so to reduce that i can go to pinch and let's pinch that down a little bit same with this and the orange Um, and now let's go to crystals and I have everything all the way up and I'm just moving my pencil over the screen to mix up some of the colors. You can also go in and let's twirl left this time. That's kind of like a really funky design. And let's do crystals again. So you can keep going back and forth as much as you like. I'm gonna stop here just for the sake of um, saving your time. Let me just push that purple off a little bit. Okay, when you have it how you want it, let's turn off the adjustments menu. And um, now you can use this as either a background or a clipping mask or, you know, however you like to kind of fancy up your lettering. So if we wanted to use it as a background, we can move this layer beneath our letters and the black doesn't stand out too well on this. So we can make the letters white. An easy way to do that is just to invert the black. So if we tap the layer and choose invert, that's automatically going to make it white. But actually that's kind of hard to read too. So this might not be a good example of a, a background. Um, the, what you can do to make it the lettering stand out a little bit more is if you duplicate it, and let's go back to invert again. So we have one black layer and one white layer. We can go to the arrow and just move that layer out a little bit. Actually, let me just tap to nudge it. And that makes it a little bit easier to read. It's still really busy and kind of hard on the eyes, but that is an option if you like. 
So let's turn off that layer and let's turn off our background layer. And um, this time I can show you what it looks like with this duplicate layer that we made. And this time we're going to make this into a clipping mask. So um, you can go in and play with the liquify first, or you can make it a clipping mask and then liquify it. So I'll show you that way. Um, so we're going to tap it and choose clipping mask. And now those colors have put like a template over our letters. And now we can go to the liquify and play around here. Um, let's go, I'm going to go to crystals and just start playing around here. Let's do some twirls. And you can see it all. If I zoom in, you can see it moving. Like so. Okay. And now, um, even if you were to add more lettering to this uh, layer here, so if I go to the practice here letter, um, layer and if I go to black and go back down to the size I was using um, anything else that you letter on top of that layer is also going to have the clipping mask on it so you can add you know little extras as you like and kind of make that fun there um, or you could even say take like a thick brush and maybe make a border just by drawing the border around there. So these are just, you know, a couple separate little ideas, um, you know, to make your lettering more fun. But liquify is definitely one of those options. Now, if I turn off this layer, it's going to hide the clipping mask and you're just going to be left with that black again. If I move the clipping mask layer, say down to the uh, white part. So I'm going to move that um, above the white. I'm going to turn the white layer back on and I'm going to make this a clipping mask. So now what it's done is we have our black layer, our liquefied layer, and our white layer. So now you can see that has clipped itself to the white layer. So it looks like there's um, some a little bit of 3D lettering going on there. So that's another fun way you can create some interesting stylized artwork there for yourself. So I can't wait to see what liquefying creations you make and come up with. And I hope you enjoy your February and your lettering and happy procreating.